There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you're watching the Jay Campbell Podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual StreamYard studio with a guy that I have attempted to do podcasts with three times now, and we've been blocked for whatever reasons in the universe, but now it is finally aligned, even though we did have some problems tonight attempting to get this done. And it is Kyle from Level Up Health. Kyle, what's up, my brother? How are hey, you, Hey, Jay. Thanks for having me, and thanks to the universe for finally letting this happen. Third time's the charm, and uh, yeah, let's push through, man. <laughs> they, can't, they can't stop the transmission. We have some powerful things to share about peptides, about spirituality, about health and supplementation, and uh I can't wait to actually discuss this. This is a bit outside of the realm of just the me- uh, the biomechanics and the mechanisms of the peptides. So I'm so excited to share this part of myself that I kind of keep suppressed for the normie podcasts. But with yours, <laughs> that's awesome, man. Well, that's a that's an awesome introduction, and I appreciate you saying all that. And yes, this is going to be a very deep conversation. But for you guys that don't know, uh, his last name is Vanderleest, and he is again an Australian naturopath and nutritionist who founded. Uh, this amazing supplement company, Level Up Health, which I do use his their supplements, and I will be uh, talking about a partnership with them probably at some point. You'll actually find notes in the bottom of this podcast when it runs, but I've used their supplements, and they're some of the, literally the best supplements on earth for anybody who's in the performance arena, uh, whether it's performance enhancement or you just want to really level up your life from a supplement standpoint. They make very, very cutting edge uh, ergogens and adjuvants for people like us. So for all the J Campbell audience, that's really super into optimizing their health and performance. This is a supplement company and a brand that you guys really want to follow and start using their products. So more on that. Um, let me just ask you a question because I've been doing this a lot in 2024 and for the purposes of this podcast today is May 1st. Uh, where are you right now on humanity right like are you selling or are you buying and you know let me disclose that a little bit more you know from a say next three to five to seven to ten years standpoint yeah so definitely think we are at a a bifurcation a crossroads where you can take the red pill the blue pill it doesn't really matter but you just need to choose high vibration and take your health and your spirituality and your life into your control um, you can do that by not buying into and not being guided by be it a politician or be it your doctor or a family member or in low vibration trying to keep you small. That's the biggest macroscopic decision that people have to make nowadays. And once you choose these high vibration things, positivity, abundance, then it's all clear sailing if you can just keep your vibration at that level. Um, we have so many things in society now as it gets more draconian, also the light comes through and provides us all these things that keep us away from that. Right. The pendulum swings one way, all the tools and all the people and all the education are available to swing you back the other way if you lose your way or if you find yourself in a bad position health-wise or relationship-wise. There's never been more audiobooks, there's podcasts like yours, uh, supplements and peptides, there's everything at your disposal now if you make that high vibrational choice to take control of your own life. So I feel like we are in a positive trajectory at the moment, but there might be a little bit more destruction before we start to reach this golden age or this um, new age or evolution of humanity. Beautiful, man. I agree 100%. Um, As the ancients have always told us, there's going to be darkness before the dawn. We're definitely not out of the woods yet. There's definitely going to be craziness. You know, the planet, you're right. I mean, the vibration of the planet is new earth already. The wave is here, but you have to choose like-minded people and obviously take action. And by doing both, it automatically from a resonance standpoint begets resonance, right? So you will attract more people of similar mind and thought 
uh, into your life by being exactly as you said, which is choosing a resonant slash high vibrational path. Um, and, 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 you know, Kyle, it's not easy for younger people. It's almost impossible for older people, baby boomers, that generation, because again, their brains are so mind controlled from being on television or watching television for 60 plus years of their life. They didn't know any better. And as you were telling me off air before the show, like the under 25 set, and I know this cause I have two daughters that are 16 and 14. These are, these are similar to the boomers and that they were brought up with phones in their hand, right? Like they've had flat screens, EMF uh, technology and radiation and Wi-Fi signals in their developmental stages since they were basically right out of the womb. I mean, let's just face it. So both of those subsections of humanity are under the gun. And I would say that like your, as I was telling you off air, like you are 31 years old, I'm 53 somewhere in between is the generation that can save this planet because below and older are gone mm -hmm. for the most part there's outliers but most of them are gone and, and again they've been hijacked due to technology there's brainwave entrainment we could go on and on and on all night but at the end of the day it's going to be some poor some form of our generation that will still move and shape you know from an action standpoint you know like you talked about the bifurcation you know it will be up to us to create a resonant ecosystem or new earth or golden age or whatever you want to call it that separates from the people that are captured because the captured people, I don't think can actually do anything. I think that they're so mind control, wind up robotic, you know, whether they're vaxxed, whether they're, I mean, I mean, dude, think of the young kids, right? They've get 70 to 80 vaxxes by the time they're 18 years old. Uh, and then the older people now have, you know, chosen the three C's and two B's. And so it's like, they're gone. I mean, you know, I mean, again, you know, this isn't something that my audience doesn't know about. So I'm not talking like outside of my purview here, but like, that's kind of where it's at. And you were, you and I were talking off air when you go out in public. Now you see it. it, you know, if you have two eyes to see and ears to hear, it's very obvious, like what is happening. And so you're right. I mean, like you have to choose people of like-minded to surround yourself with, you have to forcibly remove yourself from areas of low vibrational frequencies. Mm -hmm. You cannot go out into massive fields of people or concerts or any of those cool things that, you know, we all would like to do in our lives without knowing that the risk of dropping your frequency is extremely high, right? So it's like, it's cool to go to a concert every now and then and enjoy your life or whatever, or go to a, you know, a, a, a electronic music festival or something like that. But you got to realize that when you're out in the fields of quote unquote dissonance, you're going to have to defend yourself energetically, you're going to have to, you know, guard your energy field. And I think that not enough people know about that. Thankfully, some of us do, and we can talk about it and teach it. But like, I think, you know, one of the great things I learned probably in the last 10 years of my life is that one of the most important things you can do every single day is to guard and manage and harness your energy field. Because if you don't, you're just the sucker and you're just prey for lower vibrational frequencies. I'd like to add to that too. It doesn't necessarily need to even be a large scale human event, like a concert, like a Taylor Swift satanic concert or anything like that. Right. It can be as small as your family Christmas gathering. Like if you're a family totally. members, you can't choose these people and they might be the ones that take you off guard the most because you're not expecting to be attacked or have anything happen from family. Did you get the vax? Why not? Yeah, exactly right. So just choosing and where you live as well, like me and my partner had to relocate from the state we we're in and she was a teacher and was forced out of her job because of vaccination mandates. So it's, it's, for the younger generation, I can speak to that more because I feel like I've es escaped just by the, by the, my neck, right. that trap because I was addicted right. to video games as a kid. My parents were lazy and didn't want to spend the time, you know, nurturing me or teaching me. So they just put me in front of the t television and in front of the PlayStation and say, off you go out of sight, out of mind sort of thing. So I had to escape that. I had to resensitize my neurons and I had to retrain my dopamine. I had to quit the games, quit the porn. And even recently, the hardest one I find is, is Instagram, the explore page, the constant micro pornographic like images of your influencer flashing their ass all the time. Like that's another trap that people younger than 30, even like it's not, age exclusive every male with a sit like the smallest amount of testosterone will probably totally and true. be tra entrapped by that but that's just another layer to this that sort of the older generation don't have that working against them they're just old and their bioaccumulation of years on this toxic planet with all the forever chemicals and pesticides and now emfs too 
even um, anecdotally, my grandmother, when she was in a nursing home, she was always sick there because they weren't allowed to feed them eggs because the eggs could be contaminated. So <laughs> she would often want things like, um, what is it, pâtés and brain and all these things she ate as a child before the industrial um, food industry drill complex got involved and took these foods out of our um out of our diet but underneath her bed is where every single one of the people in their retirement home it's where they put their wi-fi routers under their bed under their bed. Oh, really? it's like you, you couldn't plan a better business model to turn people over and get them in take their money and get them dead so you can get the next person in and all mandatory with the jet, um, vaccinations all the, your, your annual flu shots or biannual i don't know how often they do it for people of that age demographic, but there's definitely a tax on both sides of it, the young and the old, and somewhere in the middle is where you've got your best chance because you've got your years of wisdom or, and you can right. see the path that you're going down if you watch your 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 um your parents or your grandparents and see their decline. Like you see where that road leads and you can just make that choice not to go down that path and find a find an alternative. Look to their parents, not not your grandparents, but their grandparents' grandparents or their parents and see that they lived a healthy life, a long life um, in the, into their 90s, into their hundreds, and that wasn't unusual. So um, diving back into that, like our generation is so far removed, the 20-year-olds, they don't have any of that concept anymore. They don't see what it is to be healthy no. and all they see is disease and illness. And it's, it's, it's my genetics, my granddad and my mom has it, so I have it and I'm a victim to it now. I'm yep. back. Am I back? <laughs> what the hell? No, I was saying, I said they don't want us talking, but no, you made an amazing point. What I was saying is to echo what you said is the younger generation is what I call the victimhood vibration. They don't know anything better other than to not be accountable. Because again, like you said, I mean, I, I really got to go back to what you said about IG. My son, my bonus son, um, who's 26 now, or about to be 26. He, four years ago, I caught him just doing nothing, you know, what I call screen facing. That was our term for it. And he said, I said, what are you doing is I'm just doom scrolling. Yep. It was like doom scrolling. What the hell is that? Right. But then I realized that that was like a term that you were just talking about, that that's what young people do. I actually had copywriters. They still work for me because, you know, I, I, we, we, there was a process that we had to go through, but I had copywriters in masterminds that told me that they would literally you probably dealt with this, but you know, and these guys are your age, but they told me that they, when they were growing up, when they would be like 20 years old, between 20 and 24, they would get onto a YouTube sh like thing, watch a video. And before they know it, they were eight hours into watching videos on YouTube. Right. So that's a phenomenon that is being done on, in, in, it's done intentionally. The, 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 the alphabet agencies are creating algorithmic, you know, software, driven and code driven uh you just call it uh entrain in entrainment waves through these videos and it's a form of mind control a very subtle form of mind control and before you know it you you're not productive you're not creative and look you know you can pull up any ancient text and they will always say all the great ones the sage wisdom would say that you know when you're in this earth you're creating when you're of this earth, you're consuming. And so the dark side wants everybody to be of this plane or of this earth trapped in this, you know, hyperdimensional third density control system. And it's like, if you're not creating, you're consuming. Mm -hmm. So you and me and people like us are creating all day long. So we don't have time to be consuming. Not to say that we haven't been, been had waves of consumption. And I'll be the first to admit, you know, I'm a big house music guy. And my big thing was probably 20 years ago when Napster came and then Beatport, I, you know, I would go on and I would start downloading music. And before I knew it, I would be like four hours into downloading music and I'd be like, oh, fuck, I got to get back to what I'm supposed to be doing. You know what I mean? So like all of us get caught up in these entrainment frequencies or these, you know, whatever you want to call it. It's like a very subtle form of hypnosis. And but that's how they use, dude. They manipulate us this there's way. There's a layer of comfort to it too, because I, as I said, I can speak yeah. to it because I've done that. I've been down that rabbit hole of just that autoplay, that playlist that YouTube creates for you. There's a level of comfort in being distracted that, you know, it, it's right. a trap. You're 100% right, whether it's doom scrolling on TikTok or Instagram or YouTubing hours on end or binging a whole Netflix series. When you're in that level, when you're stuck in that dopamine <laughs> 
feeding cycle, there's a level of comfort that you don't have to wor- take checks and balances on your own life. You don't have to take checks and balances on your health or worry about your kids and, and how they're doing in, in school or any of those things. It all just shuts off the noise of which there is so much noise now. And unless you are actively taking steps for yourself to deal with these things, they're just going to accumulate. And similar to how toxins accumulate and form cancer, well, all disease is stems from the mind and then it goes to the gut and then it go, it's all interlinked. So if you're repressing either like an abusive partner or if you're repressing your responsibilities over your kids, it's going to result in something toxic and, and result in something harmful for either them or on a larger macro macro scale for humanity and that's kind of what we're seeing now where parents have used used the ipads to raise their children or use the tv and then they just come to age and they have no idea what they want to do who they are or where they fit in in this world and that's when they turn to the dopamine addiction things just so they can feel good if if it only for five seconds until they look on the next one so for me personally the way i got out of it was really honing in on the neurotransmitter dopamine trying everything I could from a biohacking and from a supplemental perspective to get my dopamine up. And then when that sort of was just like a Band-Aid patch and I realized testosterone was, it, they are interchangeable. You cannot have one high without the other one being high as well. And that's when I got into sort of testosterone testosterone optimization and your channel too, because you're like the king of TRT and, and peptides as well. So there was so much about uh, your podcast and your message that I resonated with. And it's part of what helped me free myself out of that um in prison that prison of your own choosing which is those that doom scrolling that's awesome bro and you know it's i mean i i've known this but you know you just triggered me in a way that like high testosterone or testosterone optimized men which as you know is a very small percentage of humanity right now um can't be as triggered because our dopamine signaling is already maximized Right. So, so we know the difference, but when you create a population of low testosterone, zero dopamine porn and video game addicted people, right? Because, you know, any smart person will tell you that when you're watching porn and going to video games and then to Netflix or whatever it is that you do, all of your serotonergic pathways are being rewired. So you don't, and and you look, we can talk about this, but like, I mean, again, bro, this is a statistic that blew my brains out when I heard this and it's now two years in a row, sexual function and actual, just call it fornications, like actual sexual relationships between men and women are so low. We have the lowest birth rate in the United States, but this is actually the lowest birth rate in the history of the world right now since we started measuring it, which is probably only going back 120 years. But this is mind blowing. In Canada and the United States, in the last two years, so 2022 to 2023 and 2023 to 2024, and who knows what this year is going to turn out, 50% of the men in Canada and the United States under the age of 30 did not have sex one time in the entire year. <laughs> so when you understand that, now that, when I first heard this, I was like, that's bullshit. I, you got to verify that. I, somebody's got to fact check that. And you sure enough, you can fact check this. Why is that? It's what you just said the men are addicted to porn and addicted to video games because of the the serotonergic pathway and synaptic and dopaminergic and all these things, but all these things are being rewired. They don't need sex with a woman or a man or whatever it is, how they have sex because they get the same effect brainwave wise from the porn and the video games. Mm -hmm. So imagine how fucked up our society is. We're basically extinguishing ourselves. Because there's not going to be, you know, there's not going to be an extension of the species. We're not, there's no, you know, we're not actually procreating anymore. Mm. It, it reminds me of the fall of Rome. You know how Rome fell is basically they just overindulged in wine. Collapsed. Yeah. And they died of. Orgies and gayness. Yeah. (laughs) We're we're going through a model. It's the exact same thing. Exactly. It's the exact same thing that's happening. Orgies and gayness or, you know, gayness has been replaced to trans. They just didn't know how to call it, but it was probably the same shit back then. They started having sex with animals. All right, let's get into your stuff real yeah. quick because you and I could just talk all day about that stuff. Before but, we get to the talking um, points, I really want to like hone yeah. in on how I actually resensitize my dopamine. It's not where I plan to go, but For I sure, that please. I managed to escape it. So I want to give people those tools. Um, BPC-157, yeah, we're going to talk about later, but that actually has an effect at um, resensitizing your dopaminergic pathways. GH, but also has a really good effect in helping you 
feel the effects of dopamine. Um, ingredients like uridine, uridine monophosphate or triacetyluridine are fantastic as well for upregulating um, the dopamine receptor density. And ingredients like 9-MBC, they're the three big heavy hitter movers that I did from a supplement perspective, but then just abstinence from porn, um, reducing screen and, and, and um, game time and doing your morning rituals that, you know, most biohackers do with the sunlight on their face and their skin, that sort of stuff is how I did it. So closing that loop for everyone and, you know, hopefully everyone's no, already awesome, doing that. But... I, mean, I mean, porn is an interesting thing. I, I, I have a lot of comments about porn. I've never actually talked about them on, my, on any podcast. So you're the guy that's finally going to get them. But I think in a healthy monogamous relationship, I think that porn can be used when you're in a, okay, so, you know, obviously speaking for myself and also friends like me, when you're in a long-term monogamous relationship, you know, as a, especially as a strong alpha male, that's high testosterone, right? Like it's genetic and nature natural for us to want to disperse our seed, right? So it's like, you're in a healthy long-term monogamous relationship and you're loyal. And obviously that's important and that's a soul choice. But I think that like using sexual toys, you know, visual erotic, you know, uh, stimulation through porn or, you know, whatever it is, there's parts of that that can be healthy. Right. But let's, let's quantify this because being a guy jerking off to porn four or five times a day is not healthy. Exactly. Now, obviously, you know, about the no fap and we all know about transmutation of energy and every time you have an orgasm, I mean, I could go so, so deep on this, but like, basically when you have an orgasm, you are literally feeding fourth density service to self beings, right? Now, if you're having an orgasm for a procreative way with someone that you love and someone that you care for, um, it's a little bit different in the energy emotion or the, the emotional release of the energy, but when you're just doing it wantonly, mm. okay, that's bad. And, and, and again, it's an energy drain. People have no idea the power as a human being to climax. I mean, it really is insanely profound energy. If you start talking about the chakras and the meridians and you get into Kundalini and release and all this stuff, like, I mean, like, like I said, I know this stuff backwards and forwards, but most young people who wantonly masturbate and it's mostly, well, actually, bro, this is a crazy thing too, is I didn't realize now that how many young girls masturbate. Oh, wow. Okay. Neither. <laughs> No, it, it, it's, it, it's a cross thing. It's a cross culture thing. It's not just dudes. But so bottom line is if you're masturbating four or five times a day as a male or female, and you're doing it again to porn, mm. objectifying type stuff, um, you're draining your energy. You're being fed on by fourth density beings because you're basically energetic food and you can't create, yeah. right? Because when you release you lose creation force energy, which again, you know, Earl Nightingale talked about this. There's been a lot of great p poets, S Sufi masters and people that talk about release and stuff like that. And why, if you're walking the path, you should work on achieving orgasm without release because now you're maintaining the energy, right? And yes, there's all the no fap and all that bullshit too, but th it, there's absolutely a measurable objective, uh, tr you know, um, how would I say collective, way to harness human energy mm. by not releasing okay now again there's also issues when you do release too much right so there's it, there's a balance like everything bro it always goes back to balance right you're in a third density body you're here for pleasure and to experience physicality there's got to be some joy in your life so you're going to experience orgasm and you're going to experience sex and you're going to have these things but at the end of the day it comes down to balance and so you cannot be jacking off four or five times a day but again, in the context of having a relationship with another woman or a partner or a spouse or whatever, that's monogamous, you can use it every now and then to spice up the relationship, to spice up the level of energy exchange, whatever it is. But that's the thing is like very few people use it responsibly or use it in the context of like a long-term loving relationship. One is like caffeine to me. Some people need it. Some people don't, you know, and people who tend to have caffeine build up a tolerance to it. And then this is where porn addiction becomes, you know, catastrophic for people's lives is what you see like a man and a woman or a, whatever your orientation is and watch that sort of like right, your entry right. level, your ground level for porn. But it, the sicker you get and the more you need a dopamine release, it can get take you to some dark places. I haven't been there, but I know of people who have gone down to the point where they've even 
looked at stuff that their soul knows is wrong, like things with animals or underage and that sort of stuff. So that's like the trap. That's like the people who take a coffee and then need 10 a day to even function. That's sort of everything. Everything has its dose and its poison dose as well. So it's, it's um, lethal dose. And I think when people need dopamine all the time, which is because their testosterone is so crap that needs right. this porn right. to feel good. And then the vicious cycle that happens is if you're doing that, every time you have a sexual release and ejaculate, you lose something like five milligrams of zinc. And what is the cofactor for dopamine? Zinc and B6. So you can't make your dopamine properly. Exactly. And then it's like this this spiral that you get caught in. And it's not just porn, it's gambling, it's addictive behaviors. Like these are all very, very quantifiable things. And as you, you spoke about the higher vibrational levels, but yeah, the physiological thing of just losing your zinc and um, yeah, connection to your partner too. Those are all things that can drop when you use that. But similar to caffeine, like if you need a little boost of energy with you'd have a coffee if you want to spice things up a little bit you maybe can introduce some porn or some toys or something like that but everything has its its dose and its poison dose is my sort of overarching. right yeah the difference between a pill and a, the difference between a pill and a poison is always the dosage so well said all right so just talking a little bit about your personal journey um you kind of talked about the pros and cons of the educations you and i were talking off air about and we can just say this because you're a person to talk about this but and I don't want to lose track because we could rabbit hole, but allopathic medicine is demonic. Mm -hmm. There is absolutely no way when you're as aware and as conscious as people like you and I are, and many people watching this, that you can say anything else. There is nothing in that system that is not designed to, as you said, profit off of you, but at the same time, keep you alive as like a rotting disease, living dead corpse until you basically run out of money. And I always tell people this, you probably heard me say this on the podcast, but allopathics model, the Rockefeller model is to get a person on 20 to 25 different color coded medications a day by the middle of their fifth, you know, by the time they're 50, my age now between 52 and 55, and then they stay on those medications until they literally run out of money go bankrupt or hopefully die and they like it in their actuary tables that all three of those things happen at the same time and bro i've seen this you've seen this i know you have family members and friends you get into your mid-60s and all of a sudden they've got again you got on 20 pills you're taking these like supplement containers around that are color coded it's a cottage industry and eventually they tell them oh sorry, you, you've got this and you got to take this medication, but the medication is a experimental medication and your insurance doesn't cover it, but mm -hmm. we can give you a discounted price for blank. And then they start taking that bro and it rots their liver, destroys their kidneys, whatever. And then again, they die, they go bankrupt. I mean, in the United States alone, this is another statistic that I saw recently that is astonishing. 68% of people in the United States declare medical bankruptcy before the age of 68. Gonna get worse, think dude. about that your entire life is wiped out because of the pills that you're literally being poisoned with because as you know they do nothing they do nothing to help them. and that's gonna, only going to get worse too like the economy is absolutely blowing out in australia and america everywhere that basically just printed money to keep their economies afloat when they shut down everything and then the you know the more drugs the more bioaccumulation of these environmental toxins toxins of the xenoestrogens it's only going to get worse and not, not to mention it but all the turbo cancers that you mentioned at the start of the show that are popping up like it's not looking good and i honestly make a prediction for anyone born sort of after the year 2000 i think the average survival rate is going to drop in the 50s if not probably like, maybe 40s mm. maybe 40s maybe 40s and that and especially if we talk v well look, we'll just talk a little bit about your journey of you know becoming a naturopath and, you know, the hurdles and stuff that you've, you know, witnessed before you've, you know, actually even before you founded this company. Yeah, sure. So I actually started as a nutritionist studying that while my mom had cancer, I wanted to do something to help her. And I thought, oh, nutrition plays a huge part in this. This is the one of the variables that we can control in this disease that seemingly you have very little control of, especially with the way that Western med sort of does it. It's like, you've got the disease, you take our drugs, you take our chemo, you take our radiation, and then you go home and there's nothing else. So that's why I studied nutrition to, to, to be of value, to, to be of purpose in her journey and out of fear too. I didn't want to lose my mom. She was my best friend and happily, like everything I learned through that nutrition journey, like it took me down so many rabbit holes. The course became so 
disappointingly boring to me that I basically, while studying it, made that like my fourth priority in life is just to get through it. So I finished that degree. But my top priorities were like audiobooks, podcasts, uh, forums, all these uh, um, summits where I learn about metabolic health, where I learn about cancer, toxins, all of the things that actually contribute to cancer and not just your bad genes. So that's sort of how I got into naturopathy too, is the finished the nutrition degree and basically felt completely inadequate and useless as a practitioner in the real world. Because my first job after completing that was working at a hyperbaric oxygen facility where my mum was a patient of and she did her ketogenic therapies combined with hyperbaric and all the intravenous um, infusions as well. So she got a good eight years out of her disease before we actually moved to a new house um, that was 50 meters away from a massive cell phone consignment with 158 different frequencies being beamed basically directly into her bedroom. So she actually survived her breast cancer stage four for eight years until we moved to that house and then she developed primary brain cancer and the radiation is of all the Western medicine interventions, that one is possibly the most horrendous. Um, and that took her down so quickly and she eventually succumbed to that because she lost, she was only like 50 something kilos and she lost nearly 20 because of the radiation sickness to that. Her bones became frail. She tripped and broke a bone and then they just not what they call knocking where we're not going to treat you. We'll just give you morphine until it reaches a lethal dose and then your breathing stops. So that's how they, Sorry, man. that's how the, that's why I'm awake now seeing that unfold, going to the oncology appointments and seeing these satanic symbolism behind the desk, seeing all the, the, the fingers cut off as part of their induction to these cults and knowing the reputation of the person as the doctor of death, seeing the waiting room of this, this queue of corpses waiting for just a glimmer of hope when they're being provided the opposite. It's just horrendous to be a part of. And if anyone's been through the cancer journey and been through the Western medicine version of it, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's, it's concerning. It's a fear industry. And unfortunately, my mum didn't really get out of that fear matrix because of her programming in her life, but also to take the burden of primary care off of me. I was there for every single one of her appointments. I had took her to her hyperbarics and her oncology appointments and made her supplement stacks and cooked her ketogenic diet for her. And it, it just consumed my life to the point where I didn't have a social life. This is how I learned at 31. Yeah. I know more than I think most 40, 45, 50 year olds, because during that eight year period, I'd wake up to podcasts. I'd walk, go for a walk with the dog for an hour and a half to sunset, basically listening to podcasts to try and mainstream everything from like Thomas Seyfried, Dom Diagostino, all the hyperbaric people like Scott Scher and all the clinicians treating that. And you can imagine how much wealth I accumulated through that, you know, that painful process. It's sort of morphed my purpose and that is how can i create macroscopic change to people's health i wanted to be a practitioner and then i realized oh well in this journey we've spent easily on my mom over two hundred thousand dollars in supplements and deuterium depleted water and all that sort of stuff so if you don't have the money like all the knowledge how hard is it to actually get the results and the amount of things we basically just shotgun everything at her to see what would work and hopefully something stuck and now the knowledge i have now like in hindsight's always always a bit of a bitch but like sorry if i'm not allowed to swear but um no no you can swear you can say anything you want dude hindsight's always one of those things isn't it you look back at what you did and you know what you do now and they're pretty pretty different but there were a lot of good things that definitely restored her and health and it's the same principles for what i applied to myself what i applied to my mum and her cancer journey of what i actually applied to myself for my own like gym performance and mitochondrial enhancement it's all about restoring health rather than killing and just going after this rogue cell that is yourself it's just isolated from the rest of the body there's been so much bioaccumulation of stress and toxins and things that break mitochondrial function that it has to resort to this primal cell survival but on steroid response where it just doesn't know what it is. It's lost. It's, it's almost like the young people <laughs> it's lost its sense of self. It yeah. doesn't know where it fits in, in the body. That's your micro uh, microcosm perspective of what we're seeing really is a macrocosm um, in the whole society where we don't know where we are. We're so sick and poisoned and fearful and scared that it just has to resort to this primal glucose um, driven metabolism. Um, and just what do you do when you're scared? You, 
shrink in and then you expand because that's safe. If you've got more people who are small and not part of that, that it doesn't understand, then you feel safer. So that's sort of my perspective on cancer. But working at that hyperbaric oxygen facility, we had so many cancer patients come through. I basically became an expert in it and I was dealing with the loss of my mum at the time. She just passed right before I started that job and me being like, my whole purpose for life is gone. Now my mum is gone. I'm like, no, I can't have that. I feel lost. So I just asked for a job and got a job basically picked up where I left off with mum working there, but eventually ended up burning out, which, you know, when you don't deal with the loss of your parent, <laughs> it's uh, bound to happen eventually. Yeah. So um, that's sort of how I got into it. And after that job, I realized how much I needed to learn. So that's when I went and studied naturopathy so I could really gain a masterful understanding of supplementation and herbals and nutritional therapies rather than just this surface level that I sort of am trying to recall from podcasts or audio books that I'd listened to over the years. Well, it's much more than a surface level, bro. You definitely have a deep, deep knowledge and you're very, very I'm, I mean, I'm sure you've heard this, but you're a very, very old soul. I'm sure your mom was very blessed when you were around to help her and to soothe her and to uh, to attend to her and to care for her. And, and again, it's an awesome, very noble uh, thing that you did. And 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 truthfully, you know, because you were saying that you know, hindsight, everything that we do is a learning experience. But it's up to us to come from that place, right? A lot of people don't ever label things as a learning experience and label things as a collapse, fiasco, debacle bad thing you know insert negative adjective or energy and then they attach to that feeling and they hold on to that forever and they're completely blocked massive spiritual amputation and trauma mm -hmm. and they can't get beyond it so for you it's very clear that you used that to really truly like spawn you further and in, into this realm where you're now helping so many other people you know not just in what you do as a you know founder of a supplement company but also just by talking about what you've experienced, you know, on podcasts like this. So it's, you're, you're creating more resonance in, in, in the world, which is awesome. And I think it's a perfect segue to move into peptides and talk about peptides because I haven't said this to you, but I do speak about this to my inner circle all the time. I mean, I'm probably the most well-known, I mean, and, 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 you know, again, I don't speak from a place of ego, just from a place of like fact now, but I'm probably now the most well-known person on the planet when it comes to peptides, right? Like I, I literally have between 800 and a thousand messages an hour a day across all comms. I, I can't even between two people respond to them. I have two people mess, uh, I'm handling all my stuff and you know, I'm a, I respond, right? So I'm one of those guys who are like, you, it's hard for me to not respond. Um, but I'm learning to not do it because some of these people do If you respond, you're done. It's like opening a Pandora's box and you can't get out of it and they don't want your answer. Anyway, you know, I've learned from younger people. They're like, oh, dude, that's an asshole. You can't respond. And I'm like, an asshole? What the hell is an asshole? But so anyway, the, you know, the internet has created all these different people. But it's interesting because, and this is my opinion, but, and you know this, but I published the book in January, really February 1st of last year, but it was ready to go in January and Amazon finally launched it on February 1st. And it was just right place, right time to explain into the ether. Mm -hmm. And last year with my, you know, affiliates with limitless, you know, limitless, you know, very open about this. Now limitless went from being an 80 to a hundred thousand dollar a month research chemical company to now two and a half to $3 million a month net. Mm -hmm. Right. And being their biggest influencer slash affiliate, you know, with a whole tree of other people and, you know, mega influencers who are much bigger than me, but underneath me in the tree, it just like exploded, you know, my influence, and awareness and whatever you want to call it in the internet world. Now, obviously, as you know, like you, like me, people like us are shadow banned and heavily suppressed. So they're not, we're never going to have like millions of people following us, but there's a lot of people that do. And it's created this world. But my whole point of why I'm telling you this is my personal opinion is that so many people are harmed by the V. I, I feel like we can say it now, right? Like you couldn't say it before because the, 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 the algorithm would go, wing. People would say maxine or waxine or whatever, right? But, you know, the V has damaged so many people, Kyle, that most people are into the peptide space, not for like you and me, as much as we want to think, oh, it's health optimization. They want to get leaner and look better and improve their cognition. No, they want to heal. Mm. 
from being poisoned and damaged at a soul level, a physical level, a spiritual level, whatever you want to call it. And so we're just in the real, in the benefit of it. Your company is, you know, in the middle of it, you're benefiting of it because of the amazing formulations you've created. I'm benefiting it. Other people like us are like me are benefiting, but dude, it's, it's, it's a, it's a phenomenon. This is literally a phenomenon at this point. And I don't see it slowing down because as much as the draconian reptilian FDA, big pharma, whoever they are, wants to shut it down, the more they try to block it, the more it goes up. Mm, the genie is out of the bottle with this. The genie is completely out of the bottle. I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong, dude. Like they've already called me out in the Wall Street Journal, Jay Campbell, you know, I mean, it's crazy. You know, I three different attorneys I've consulted with, hey, you know, what is my risks? What is my liabilities? They're like, hey, you know, if justice, if the feds justice wants to put a case on you, it's going to cost you $300,000. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's, it's not like I don't know what's going on. And, and there's other people, it's not just me, but I mean, I would say that my name is because I've been so outspoken and I obviously I represent the research, right? I'm not like hiding behind big pharma's, you know, pockets and saying, oh, you can't use those peptides. I mean, you know, you, you see what just happened with Andrew Huberman's debacle of a podcast talking about peptides, right? Yeah. <laughs> So it's like, and you know, when we call, I called him out and he, you know, he went after me on Twitter and I humiliated him. I mean, he has no shot, none. But so, I mean, like the reality is, is that we're in this world right now where people like you and me have this insanely amazing opportunity to truly change the world, right? So going back to what we said in the very beginning of this, you've got people that are choosing the organic timeline and you got people that are transhumanist biobots. Give me the vax, hook me up enslaved me to the cloud. Mm -hmm. And I think people like us, bro, are really at the forefront of that new quote unquote, new earth, you know, golden age frontier to teach people how to take ownership of their personal health, to not rely on their doctors, mm -hmm. to not actually even have to care about doctors. And look, when it comes to therapeutic testosterone, I still recommend working with a physician. But if you're in fucking Australia or you're in Latin America or you're in countries where there's no docs that know jack shit, mm -hmm. you still got to take matters into your own hand, whether it's you're using something that's underground or gray market or something like that. So, like, I can't be stupid and say, like, to my audience that's in South Africa or Australia, you know, or places where they don't have testosterone. Thankfully, in a lot of these countries, they can just buy it in the local pharmacy or the pharmacia or whatever. But at the same time, like, I have to be sensitive to everybody's situation because they're so different and so it's like i gotta be able to teach people how to do this on their own mm -hmm. yeah it's the only equitable yeah way. i know you and dave lee have a lot um to do with each other and he's so frustrated well, trying to work yeah. in australia with um testosterone he's doing the same thing dude he's jay campbell in australia yeah, yeah exactly. literally yeah, he, he's helped me with a lot of the formulas too so that's why they're so good i've got multiple people lending awesome. their knowledge their expertise to help with things like liver complex for people who have a cooked liver cooked out liver or the total recomp for a non-peptide but also non-harm yep. way to help people with their blood sugar controls so all these products were sort of made with the vibrational intention when my mum died to i need to change this system people shouldn't have to go through what we've gone through and then from that point i thought yep. i'd do it as a practitioner but that you can only reach so far when you're sitting in a room one-on-one -on -one with people at best, you might see a 1,000 right. people, 2,000 people if you're not really doing a thorough job per year versus the supplements are doing that now at a level that I couldn't even – you'd need 20 me's consulting to do it That's at awesome, that level, man. and it's only growing now provided the powers that be don't suppress these things anymore. I actually wanted to ask you too, has there been any updates with the FDA and their ban on the compounding peptides? Because I was asked to speak about that, and I'm like, I don't actually know where it stands at the moment. All that they've done is cut the head off the snake a little bit with the purity and then driven people to my advantage, honestly, but driven people online to vendors and all these other companies that have popped up like mushrooms since. Um, so there's no progress or anything. It's just the ban. Well, so I mean, so, so, so it's a great question. So the latest is, and hopefully this, actually this podcast is going to go out in probably like the probably last week of June. I think this podcast will go out last week of June, but, um, so it's perfect timing, probably. Um, so the latest and greatest, again, as of May 1st, is multiple big name compounding pharmacies in the United States are suing the FDA. Good. Now, just to sue the FDA, you know, takes obviously a giant set of brass balls. Remember from Glengarry Gun Ross, you see these? These are a set of brass balls. 
you don't have brass balls. No, but to, to have brass balls to sue the FDA, you've obviously got to have uh, all your ducks in a row, right? Like you, you got to have clinical efficacy. You've got to have trials of you know, human trials of people that you've been working with. So from that perspective, I feel like the FDA overstepped their bounds and, you know, for the listening audience, and again, most of my listening audience knows this, but for the listening audience, it doesn't in September 29th of last year, 2023, they classified 26 peptides as class two, which means they're potentially dangerous and harmful. Not enough human studies, the same shit they always do when a drug is super effective, right? We're not making money off of these peptides because we can't patent them. They're out there in the wild. The research companies have them. The compound pharmacies are making all sorts of adulterated versions of them at one fifth the price of the retail. Like we're talking about GLPs. And so like, we got to shut this down. So they, they did that. Some of the, some of the compounding pharmacies, Kyle just bitched out immediately and said, Oh, we can't sell these anymore. So it obviously it drove up the price a little bit in the compounding side of the world. But again, you know, the world that I am in day in and day out is the research world, right? And so again, because I teach people how to do this on their own, they don't need to go and get a doctor's script. They don't need a compounding pharmacy. They can literally buy this off the fucking internet. Now, again, you know, very important because you said something that's critically important is there are a lot of peptide companies out there now. They're straight up brewing this shit in their fucking basements or their bathrooms or their fucking kitchens or wherever the hell this is. And so you've got to be buyer beware. You have to understand like who you're working with. You've got to trust a company. The only research companies that anyone should 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 remotely consider using are ones that are doing uh, COAs, right? So certificates of authenticity, and actually do have a lab that is either FDA or GMP compliant, right? So certified and registered that they're actually have the ability to manufacture peptides. Now I'll say this because I think the audience deserves this. I've said this a couple of other times, all peptides from a raw material standpoint, I shouldn't say all, but literally 95% come from exactly. China. Same. Okay. So, yeah. So, and, and again, most medical drugs come from China. There's some that come from India, but it's either India or China, but, but from a peptide standpoint, almost all the raw materials come from China. The difference between U S manufactured and Chinese manufactured is it's a game, right? So the raw materials come over and then they're vile. I mean, they're, they're bottled and put in a vial in the United States. And they say those are U S made versus if they come over already viled from China, then they're Chinese made, Right. And then you've got lyophilized peptides and you've got raw, raw material peptides mm -hmm. and people get into that and they get all confused and they're like, dude, I don't understand. Should I get lyophilized or raw? All that stuff really means nothing. The bottom line is make sure that you're buying your peptide from a reputable provider who is testing, who does offer certificates of authenticity. Uh, and that's why I've been behind limitless as long as I have. Now, again, at the end of the day, the research chemical industry is a shady industry. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is go look at the website and look at how they write, you know, and they talk about how like, you know, not, you know, some of them are stupid and they say not for human consumption, but most of the smart ones say this is for research only. Yeah. If you're going to research, use these, then you are on your own. They cannot give you advice. They cannot tell you how to dose it. They cannot tell you how to put bacterial static water in the jaw. I mean, in the vial, I mean, all of these things people come to people like me now for, right? Because they're like, oh, well, the peptide company that you recommend isn't telling me how to do this. And I'm like, well, motherfucker, that's why I write books and I make courses and we do podcasts, yes. right? Because they're not allowed at the same time. So it's, it, dude, it's a very interesting thing, but in a long-winded way to answer your question, it's the same. Mm -hmm. What I've been told by attorneys is they don't have, at least right now, the manpower, meaning the FDA, to personally go after every single compound pharmacy that is still selling peptides that are considered class two peptides, Good. right? So it's a manpower issue. Mm -hmm. And in truth, bro, if they ever did enforce it and they shut down all the compounding pharmacies, imagine how big the research community would exactly be. Exactly right. Yeah. Limitless with 10 X. Yep. Exactly right. I, um, because a lot of people will, let me just say this. A lot of people are, you said it fear especially in the allopathic medical industry, they're still afraid of doing this themselves, right? Like in their mind, they'll be like, well, but if I pay a thousand dollars for a 20 mil, 20 milligram vial of BPC versus getting it for 150 bucks at a research company, I have to reconstitute it. Mm, yeah. 
and I have to figure out the dosing. I have to figure out milligrams versus micrograms. And I have to calculate based on the size of my syringe and all this stupid shit that you and I have like forgotten years ago that is simple to do, but in their minds, because they're coming from allopathic, their doctor has told them, no, no, no. You want me to do this for mm -hmm. you. You want this dummy proof. I don't want your, your we don't want you to think. Well, and we want you just to be a good rule follower, order taker. Yeah. Well, and it's you know to saying? my company is I kind of taper or appeal to those people because everything I, I make is from a peptides perspective or, or just capsules. They're like orally exactly. bioavailable ones. You don't need to have, you don't need to learn how to reconstitute and, um, but then you're limited to how many are actually going to work orally. The, the, the catalog of, I don't know, like 50 to a hundred injectable peptides narrows down to sort of like 15 to 20 that might actually work provided that you're using the right form provided that they're buffered or that they're a fragment of the parent peptide too. So, um, like that's honestly my intent behind this company is to help people with their health, help them get on a higher vibration. And how do you do that? You got to start by having the foundational stuff there. Their health needs to be there. If you're sick, you can't <laughs> vibrate at a high frequency, well but let me commend you on that, by the way, because I want to blow some smoke up your ass right now. So you are the only company, I think, in the world, and I know I told you this a long time ago, that actually does put out oral-based peptide capsulated formulations that work, right? Now, there's other people selling oral capsulated peptide formulations, but the key is, as what you're saying, is they probably don't work because A, there's not enough ingredient, or B, they're not formulated in the correct way. And that's the thing. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I want my audience to know you know, cause there's a lot, let's be honest, bro. There's 80% of the marketplace is such a pussy. They will not inject themselves with a fucking insulin needle. Right. So let's just say that right now. So the barrier of entry with oral capsules is zero. Exactly. So you have been smart enough to figure out, right. I mean, I should say there are still people afraid to swallow shit. Right. But that's a small percentage of people, but you were smart enough early enough to figure out, wow, I'll just take all the peptides that I can formulate the right way that actually show efficacy from oral absorption, you know, pa first pass through the liver into the bloodstream, blah, 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 mm -hmm. you know, through the digestive tract and we'll sell those and you've blown up. And, and that's the cool thing. And obviously I've been waiting to do this podcast with you because I really wanted to promote your company and your product because bro, I have so many people that message me every day. I don't respond to any of them, but just tell me the oral ones, bro. Mm -hmm. Just send me what oral ones I can take because bro, they will never inject themselves. They're deathly afraid of needles. And that's, that's again, that's the majority of people. A lot of our um, research and development budget is going to figuring out ways that we can make these larger chain amino acids work um, orally as well. Even like, I think the ones that a lot of people use creams, they'll use like dihexa cream. Um, Transdermal. Yeah. I really like that yeah. as a delivery. That maybe is a, a way that we can give peptides to the that set of people that you just described who don't like taking capsules. Um, but yeah, a lot of our research and development is the one percent. Yeah, exactly. I can't swallow a capsule. God, yeah. grow up if you're that one percent. But um, fuck, dude. Well, what about intranasal though? Let me ask you about that. Like, what are the rules and regulations? Because obviously, Limitless and some of the other bigger guys, you know, send out intranasal versions of certain things. And obviously, we can talk about which ones. And I think we know what are. But do you like that as a delivery system, or do you think that's also a big barrier of entry? Because a lot of people don't like sh snuffing shit up their nose. Well, it's a delivery. Um, it's a delivery mode for brain absorption, as far as I'm concerned. And, um, right. So ones that you yeah. want to work in the brain. Um, then I would definitely suggest that things like your dihexis, cere uh, cerebral acid, I don't think you can do, but uh, P21, all those ones through the nose, straight to the brain. That's my personal opinion for those ones like KPV as well. They have um, the ability um, to be taken as a capsule if you really want to have that local effect for any gut issues. But if you're taking the KPV for like the melanocortin system in the brain for helping with neuroinflammation, then yeah, an intranasal one would possibly be the better way to do that. It all depends on like, you need to be smart about how you, you take these things and use these peptides. Um, delivery mechanism, like BPC, if you've got a distal injury, inject it in the site as your first port of call. If you don't want to inject it, take it really high dose orally and then super saturate your gut so that any of the peptide that was otherwise going that, so you can get the peptide distally. Um, a certain amount is always going to be used by your gut lining because that's sort of where the first point of contact and who doesn't have some level of gut inflammation or gut distress now. That's where all, if you only took 
almost nobody. You took two hundred and fifty micrograms, like one capsule of BPC. It's not going to help your distal injury because all that two hundred and fifty no. milligrams is probably already used in your stomach for things like H. pylori or stomach acid issues. Totally. If you take 500 mi micrograms, yep. then it's going to be used by your small intestines and your large intestines, and it's still not going to get totally. like systemic and orally um, and into circulation. It will get into circulation, but not at a level to elicit enough change or the healing benefits that you're looking for. So that's where I say, like, if you've actually just hurt yourself, if you pulled a pulled a muscle or done a tendon or something, you need to do really high dose orally for at least a week to two weeks. And I'm talking 1,000 micrograms of BPC. A lot of people who say I did nothing, but they took one capsule of 250 micrograms right. over two months and yeah. said it didn't do much. Oh, I'm yeah. pooing better though. <laughs> That's like, like, yeah, of course. By the way, I don't want to put you in trouble, but you know, I love you now. And I know you're like me, you'll say anything and you're very, very, very transparent. Are seeds BPC capsules worthless? I haven't personally tried him because in Australia, I didn't even <laughs> get them. <laughs> they, they, um, flat out block them into coming into Australia. Like, yeah. Our country, <laughs> dude. I set you up so bad. That was such a good answer, bro. You're such an ancient soul. I couldn't get you. Uh, I I personally think they're worthless, and I think that he's a very smart man and, and a very knowledgeable peptide guy. And I think that you know he was triggered or talked into by whatever who manages his supplement companies. Because at the end of the day, Bo, most of these brilliant doctors slash surgeons and sieges is happens to be both. They don't. They're not business people, bro. They're just not. You know. They they're they they you know. Like Lavelle, right? He wrote the peptide book the same. His peptide book came out like four or five months after my peptide book. And it's a good book from an information standpoint, but it's an absolute farce. Like, why would he not hire, a, 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 you know, some sort of a company that knows how to fucking promote a book and publish a book? I mean, his book looks like literally he copied it out of a fucking uh, a Xerox copywriter and formatted it. And I have it over here somewhere. But I mean, look, at the end of the day, doctors are not marketers, mm. bro. They're not. Well, I can't. You know what I'm take, the, the business side takes up so much of my time when you get 150 to 200 emails a day of people asking how to take your capital exactly, alone reconstitute and inject and where do you inject and all these other questions that people really just and and you can't train people to be your brain no, exactly. right so they can't answer <laughs> well, yeah exactly believe me believe me we have the exact same problem well i don't know if you know this because you were talking about spending money on r d but Lav La i always pronounce his name jim lavalier whatever the fuck is lavelle whatever his last name is you know the doctor in orange county which i think he's actually going to be at a4m and i'm going there tomorrow in, in west palm for three days but uh he's working on liposomal and some other form of like exotic delivery systems getting some of these peptides similar to probably what you're doing encapsulated so that they can be absorbed orally so from what i understand and maybe you can talk a little bit about this before we finish up but there is a form there are new technologies that will possibly make oral based peptide formulations better now obviously before you answer we already know that's possible with bioregulators right the russians have already figured that out with the bioregulators so you know where is that like latest cutting edge stuff like where is the research taking you so yeah definitely looking at the liposomes or um micellular or micellular. all these other potential delivery mechanisms are all basically the same you have it encapsulated in a fat it's kind of um just to protect it as well like if you put it in a light if you liposome properly this is another big important point manufacturing processes are very important for liposomes there's companies that are putting out liposomal everything and then when you analyze the liposomes they're all broken down so there's no difference it's just marketing with some basically they've put uh some sunflower or soy lecithin in with their thing and have lied and said that it's liposomal but making sure that you liposome it properly so having a really good manufacturing is a good way to deliver the larger peptides but i'm really liking the research into the fragments of the larger peptides like tb4 the AC fragments that are now available, the SDKP and the LKKTTQ fragments. They're the C terminal and the N terminal of the TB4. These are only seven, I think five, four amino acids and seven amino acids. So you can get most of the benefits, um, the TB fragment benefits uh, of the parent TB4 molecule just from these fragments. So I think as we continue, we'll probably discover more of these fragments or be able to break down the larger peptides that would otherwise need to be injected into their like fragments with, of which we know the mechanisms that that specific fragment does. So like the growth hormone ones, I don't think we're there yet with those, but even those like CJC, I've heard there's an oral fragment. I can't remember the name of that off the top of my head because it usually sounds like a droid from Star Wars. But um, 
yeah, apparently there's um, there's an oral fragment of that that is available and combining that or even ones that if you can get the chain length down to sort of like less than 20, then I think there's a chance that you can liposome these and get them to deliver really well. But ones that are like insulin level 51 amino acids long, I don't think they're there yet. And I think that the pharm pharmaceutical companies have already looked at ways to get these larger chain ones in because if they could make an oral insulin, then wow, that's, uh, that's yeah. a very... Of course. blockbuster drug so i still think we need to reduce the chain length of these peptides down but then yeah in just like even this as simple as using a delayed release capsule like that can substantially increase the bioavailability of like an oral copper ghk right. like we know if you take ghk what you would would otherwise inject and just shoot it in your mouth you're going to get like less than five percent of it actually have any benefit right. and if it does right. have benefit it will only benefit the gut of which it does pretty well but if you buffer against the stomach acid if you put a delayed release capsule in it and then another layer that we're working on again is if you liposome this as well those fatty acids that phospholipid bilayer is another protective barrier against all of the proteases and pepsin and the stomach acid too so now we're getting to a point where peptides can actually just be taken like supplements and have profound benefits way beyond anything i learned in nutrition way beyond anything in naturopathy um that's why I'm so passionate about them. And that's when, why when I tried them, they stood out against about half a million dollars over the years of products and um, biohacks and uh, naturals and nutritional supplements that I tried. Peptides always come out on top. And that's just because that shows how yeah. powerful they are and why everyone calls them the future of medicine, because they are. <laughs> they, they are. Well, I mean, I'll just add, you know, real quick that you know, we kind of were talking about the air, but I didn't share this with you. But, you know, when people ask me to promote their products, you know, I usually am just like, bro, I do peptides. Like, you know, none of that shit, you know, is natural, you know, natural, naturopathy or, you know, herbals or, you know, Chinese or Japanese, you know, grown in the mountains and nobody else has it. Like, it's like, dude, like, hey, that might be cool and it might be found in nature and cool and might work and stuff, but nothing holds a candle to peptides. You're right, because... And, and that's, you know, the test of time. I mean, again, Huberman was like saying, oh, well, you know, they don't have any studies only in animals. And it's like, bro, we've been using peptides since 2004. The studies are in our own self, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we have empirical data, okay? We don't have the lab coat God, you know, data, you know, there's no studies because they don't want there to be studies, but yeah, but we've been using this. I don't know. It just, it makes me laugh, but yeah, dude, peptides make everything else pale in comparison. And I'll, you know, just tell you, Kyle, that like when people understand what bioregulators can do mm -hmm. and you know, there's injectable bioregulators, which, you know, we're not, we don't even have in the West yet. The Russians have still blocked that out. So it's like, you know, you take a bioregulator that's an oral version and you could take it, ten, you can 10 X it. Yeah. You can 10x its efficacy. So I I like you agree that we are really in the ground floor, the infancy of this quote unquote biohacker peptide bioregulator revolution. And and it's cool that like you at with your company are at the forefront and me, you know, with my brand or my voice or whatever it is. I mean, we're kind of in the same place. So I mean, I think there's a lot of ways that you and I can leverage you know, our relationship and leverage the things that we do to really help the world. Cause I know you're the same as me. Like it's not about how many products we can sell or how much money we can make in a month. It's literally how many people can we literally help? How many people can we actually save from the draconian allopathic medical system? Because what we do is teach them a better way. We teach them again, how to become the proactive scientists of their own health. And until they learn that, they're still going to go and listen to their doctor. Because Kyle, my doctor said, I mean, how many times have you heard that in your life and you look at the person and says, who gives a fuck what your doctor said? What's worse is what about you? What's worse is when they purchased the product and their doctors told them not to take it. I'm like, for, for God's sake, you're this close to getting relief from your symptoms. Also, my doctor says not to take them. Oh my God, dude. Will it interact with my medicines? I'm like, it'll probably may make you not need your medicines if you continue to take it over time. So like, it's up to you. Do you want to stay on the, like, for example, like, antihistamines if you've got histamine problems do you want to stay on them forever and then need them forever because chronic use of them creates the need for more creates more histamine in your body or do you want to take something like a dao enzyme or a quercetin or something natural or a, a bioregulator a thymic peptide or something like that that can actually address the issue so 
like peptides are great. And I, every time I formulate anything, I take the best of what I've learned from my two degrees, nutrition, and naturopathy, and use them instead of using bullshit like a, a cellulose filler or a mannitol or any, any of these other things. Like why wouldn't companies combine the best of both worlds? Like PEA is what I put in the BPC because that's such a powerful anti-inflammatory. It kind of works like CBD oil, CBD oil in its effects. It has an analgesic effect. So if people are taking BPC for their injury, well, they're getting short-term relief of their pain with the analgesic and pain and anti-inflammatory effects of the PEA. And then on the back end, the P the BPC is actually working on the root cause and, and healing, upregulating upregulating all those growth factors and the nitric oxides to get that healing benefit. So I think peptides need to be included in your modern age, new era toolbox, your medicine cabinet. And if you can do that, then that's just like your gateway to, to sovereignty because your health's being covered. You know, how can you go on to create macroscopic change in the, in the world? If, as I said earlier, if your health's not there or if your testosterone's low and I'm 31 too. So like the, the GH secretagogues and the, um, like your CJCs, your te Tessa Moralins, they're all really appealing to me because I don't want to mess with my endogenous testosterone supply and maybe not yet. Yeah, not yet. Yeah. So, and maybe I want to have more kids. So that's where I've I leveraged the botanicals that I know you as an op TRT optimized person and Dave Lee is the same with the products like my botanabolic. Like if you can have something to to be that middle ground before you get to that stage in your life where TRT is appropriate, then that's before you cross over to the dark side. <laughs> exactly. There's no going back apparently. But um Oh no, there's definitely no going back. Well, bro, I, 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 one other thing I wanted to ask you, what is your opinion, your professional insight and wisdom around carbon 60? I think it's a very good anti-inflammatory. Obviously it's what they promote it for. I feel like you've yeah. got a redox balance in your body, oxidation and reduction. And it's one of those things that can shift the pendulum really far the other way. So maybe just cycle it and don't use it around workouts and understand that inflammation and oxidative stress is part of how your body works. If you just flat out of shut course. it off completely with your hydrogen and your carbon 60, then you are shutting off some benefits. You are shutting off the negatives of the inflammation, but what is the purpose of inflammation? It's to elicit an immune response. It's a signal from your body for yeah. something to happen. So, you know, chronically bad short-term decent good like if you didn't get inflammation you wouldn't build muscle after a workout yeah just exactly. being intelligent with these yeah. things not using anything like for indefinitely carbon 60 is definitely one of those ones i wouldn't personally use indefinitely um i think i've even heard yeah. that there might be bioaccumulation of the um of the carbon as well so i've used it i've liked it but i think there are other things that you can use that are better and even like ghk you could use that yeah, or yeah ghk is that's what we call it. I call that the sham wow peptide. I'm, I'm in the same agreement. I mean, and again, I promote companies that sell carbon 60. I think the carbon 60 when you're severely immunocompromised is yes. great, but you're right. hundred percent that, um, it shouldn't be used all the time. And then also for a faster like me, you know, it's an oil, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a caloric, you know, density, uh, food as a fat, you know, oil, so, fat soluble oil. So it's like, you know, I'm not using it on my fasting days because I just don't want to do it. You know, and people ask me that all the time. Well, how do I take my carbon 60 on my fasting days? You don't, if you're truly fasting. Right. But anyway, I'm glad you uh, chimed in on that. Cause I, I somewhat agree with that, but, um, I mean, actually I totally agree with that, but, uh, bro, this was a profound show. Um, so guys and gals, uh, I don't have, maybe you do, but I don't have my, my code right now. It'll either be JC or J or J a number, but obviously it'll be in the show notes when this podcast run later. But, uh, I'm, I want to, I'm not, I want to, I will, I'm going to have, I told you this already. I'm going to have one of my copywriters, Tom interview you. And I want to do a, you know, a, a really awesome article about the company and you and, you know, your formulations and your theories and, you know, really where this is going and really talk about, you know, the oral based peptides and, and how you formulate them and how they're, you know, designed for maximum efficacy and really separate yourself, you know, from a standpoint of like, cause as you know, bro, there's a ton of people out there promoting oral peptides and they're a, the company's shit, B the formulations worse than shit <clears throat> and C you can't trust that the actual formulation is even anything of the ingredients that they say is on the label. Right. So, I mean, that's, that's the thing that's really hard. I'm sure if you tested half of these companies products, you would literally throw them. In trash. Exactly. That's the thing. No, there's not really any regulatory oversight for, for truth in the industry. Like I have a purposeful reason to do this. Like I, you know, I use these myself. I am the 
first person to use them and I'll be the last person to use my own products. I don't, I want them to work for myself, my family, my friends, and anyone who buys them. I'm not in the business of bullshit. I really have the desire to help as many people as possible from the story I told you. Um, if people provide yeah. someone with a product that isn't what they say it is, that has huge ramifications. Like not only are you stalling someone's healing journey, you're making them not believe in the system that actually can provide them help. If you give them a peptide yeah. and it's like the acetate form orally when you've claimed it's arginate or you've put 50 micrograms in it when you've claimed half half of a, a milligram, that's significant. And then perception of these things. So we need to do it right. We're at, we're at a crossroads with peptides where, you know, we've got all these regulatory things happening that if people are doing it wrong, then that only provides fuel to the fire for the FDA for, oh, this company, they were taking BPC and it had all this LPS or heavy metal contamination. Therefore, we're going to ban it, full stop. If people like companies like mine and Limitless do it right, then that's when we can really create a macroscopic change in people's health. Yeah. And you are doing that right now. So, I mean, dude, again, profound podcast. I'm going to have Tom reach out to you. So ladies and gentlemen, and all the amazing people that watch the Jay Campbell podcast, always support the amazing folks that come on here, uh, go to leveluphealth.com and follow him, uh, Kyle on level up health on IG. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon. Thanks for having me on Jay.